Doom Eternal is an evolution of a Doom formula. The innovative combat and the ambitious story push the franchise in a bold new direction that takes it beyond anything we've seen before, but none of that would have been possible without Doom 2016. Before Eternal redefined the franchise, Doom 2016 successfully brought it into the modern era by taking the formula present in the previous four games and perfecting it. The game has everything you'd expect from one of the classics, intense combat, hidden secrets, a unique atmosphere, and a kick-ass soundtrack to tie it all together. It even takes a handful of ideas from the Quake franchise, like the various power-ups and the arena-based combat structure that modern Doom heavily relies on. All of these iconic Get Software staples are brought together in a way that had never been seen before. 2016 was able to combine and modernize every aspect of Doom while still managing to respect its history every step of the way. The two biggest elements that 2016 pulls from the classics are the combat and exploration, both of which keep their charming simplicity while gaining an added layer of depth. The combat system introduces new and unique features like weapon mods, glory kills, and grenades, but it still resembles the combat established by the original Doom. You aren't constantly getting tutorials that teach you to destroy weak points and quick swap. The combat is as simple as running around a room shooting things, just with extra abilities and added verticality. The introduction of these new features form a tight combat loop that allows everyone to play how they want to play. You could run around spamming the super shotgun, or you could consistently swap between weapons and mods. The choice is entirely yours. There are added benefits to stepping out of your comfort zone and trying out the equipment that you've picked up along your journey. The Gauss Cannon has two particularly overpowered mods that pretty much obliterate anything in front of them. The Rocket Launcher's Lock-On mod can be abused to generate high amounts of damage in quick succession. And the Super Shotgun has the infamously overpowered Double Trouble Weapon Mastery that lets you shoot twice before reloading, allowing you to melt anything that's unfortunate enough to be in front of you. You're given the freedom to integrate these into your gameplay style in whatever way you see fit, which is an extension of Classic Doom's gameplay philosophy of letting the player use whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. While the two styles have a lot in common, they really start to differ when it comes to the resource management. Doom 2016 allows the player to get a constant flow of ammo and health items just by killing enemies. If you have the right runes equipped, you can go through the majority of the game without ever running out of ammo, and the glory kills allow you to frequently gain large amounts of health. This system is a lot better for the more action-packed gameplay style that 2016 uses. The gameplay would get frustrating and disruptive if you had to stop and search for resources every minute like you do in Classic Doom. I think this is a massive improvement from the original formula. Your survival depends on how well you can utilize your toolset and not how good you are at finding resources that have been scattered across the level. They've taken a more hardcore survival-based system and turned it into a flowing combat loop, which ends up feeling more natural and allows you to focus on the action. Don't be mistaken, though, Doom 2016 still manages to make resource searching and secret hunting an integral part of the experience. In order to keep up with the game's increasing difficulty, you'll need to constantly be on the lookout for crucial upgrades that have been hidden throughout the levels. While you will occasionally find a large cache of resources, the majority of the game's secrets will have Predator Suit tokens, weapon mods, Argent cells, and weapon upgrade points, which all contribute to your success throughout the campaign. This is a great replacement for the more resource-oriented secrets of the classics. Finding various upgrades feels a lot more important and crucial to long-term survival than a room full of ammo or some armor bonuses. You have the ability to unlock most of the weapons early if you can find them while secret hunting, which adds another layer of depth and importance to searching every level from top to bottom. If you find every secret in each level, you'll constantly be an overpowered badass. But if you decide to skip beside stuff and just push through the levels, you may end up feeling a bit underpowered by the end of the game. Some of the secrets are hidden very well and require multiple steps to complete, which makes them feel incredibly rewarding on top of the importance. They're not nearly as complex as a lot of the secrets in the original trilogy, but they still manage to feel worthwhile and somewhat challenging. Although they don't offer any significant rewards, each mission will have a classic level hidden somewhere around the map that can only be accessed by finding a special lever. They blend in very well and are usually pretty difficult to find, which makes it feel even more special and reminiscent of the classics and their well-hidden secrets. They also take several opportunities to reference other id software and Bethesda characters using the Doomguy collectibles. You can find figures that resemble the Vault Boy from Fallout, the Quake Ranger, Phobos from Quake 3, the Enforcers from Rage, Commander Keen, and even Walter White. It's always fun to go through the game and find these, it adds an extra bit of charm to an activity that some may find a bit boring. Overall, they do a really great job of making the Seekers feel like a rewarding and integral part of the experience while also respecting the history of the franchise. There aren't too many other games that have a turkey-punching arcade game and a knockoff version of Candy Crush casually hidden around levels, so it definitely takes the cake and creativity at the very least. Oh, and speaking of cake... Doom 2016 doesn't just absolutely nail the combat and exploration, it also manages to have some of the best level design in the entire franchise. 
While the arenas themselves take a lot of inspiration from the Quake series, everything else is more complex and features tons of backtracking and key hunting, which is an integral part of the classics. I'm personally not the biggest fan of the complex mazes and key hunting in my first two Doom games. While I understand that it's an important part of a gameplay, it often feels boring and unnatural. I tend to play Doom for the incredibly fun combat, not to blindly run through tight mazes looking through items that I'll probably end up missing. Doom 2016 does an incredible job at making the key hunting and backtracking feel natural. It's integrated into the levels and isn't ever something that you have to go out of your way to do. Some people may prefer the more complex key hunting featured in the classics, but I personally find that 2016's natural implementation of such an integral feature is much more enjoyable. Not to mention that the act of obtaining each key feels much more impactful due to the keys themselves and the way that they're used. You never know what to expect when picking up an item. Sometimes it's a keycard with a jump scare, sometimes it's a colored skull, and sometimes it's the entire upper torso of a UAC scientist. Forcefully inserting a skull key into a hell door never gets old, and using someone's arm to gain access to a door is, ironically, kinda funny. It adds a lot of variety to an otherwise mundane task while simultaneously adding to one of Doom 2016's most prominent aspects, the atmosphere. While the first two Doom games have a great atmosphere, Doom 64 and Doom 3 are on an entirely different level. They both use a very unique mix of lighting, locations, and sound to give the games an incredible atmosphere, which is something that Doom 2016 is able to pull off just as well, if not better. Every inch of a UAC Mars base is covered in blood and gore. There's death and destruction as far as the eye can see. It's almost uncomfortable to walk through pools of blood from thousands of slaughtered UAC employees. There's tons of little details that make it feel like a realistic tech base attached to an industrial compound on Mars. I mean, it's so atmospheric and realistic that you could literally flush all of the toilets and the bathrooms. The world feels lived in, and the endless death really demonstrates just how devastating the demonic invasion was. Everything is dark and hopeless, but it's nothing compared to the atmosphere of hell. Every hell level manages to feel eerie and tense. Hearing whispers and screaming while walking through desolate, blood-soaked halls gives you the unforgettable feeling that this version of hell is a cruel and unforgiving wasteland. Everything feels ancient, rusty gates creak when they open, and the heavy stone doors grind as they slide apart. It adds an extra level of impact that no Doom game has had before. The atmosphere is elevated even more when you find the Slayer's Testaments, a series of hell artifacts that tell the story of the legendary Doom Slayer from the perspective of the demons. It really helps to illustrate just how much damage the Doom Slayer has done to hell over time. He's relentlessly slain countless of demons, all in the name of hatred and vengeance. The demonic voice that reads the Testaments will announce your presence and instruct the demons to kill you during a later level, which is both badass and chilling at the same time. Every bit of the incredible atmosphere is enhanced by Mick Gordon's award-winning soundtrack, which is inarguably one of the best parts of the entire game. The slower ambient tracks set the mood while you're moving from one objective to the next. They give the levels a darker vibe and a heightened atmosphere. But, let's be honest, the atmospheric tracks can't even come close to competing with the absolute bangers that play during combat. I mean, do I even need to go over the soundtrack? It's one of the most well-known video game OSTs of all time, and it's a good portion of a reason why Doom 2016 was so successful in the first place. It's an incredible blend of industrial, electric, and metal that does a lot of new things while sneaking in references to the classics. Mick Gordon's work on the Doom 2016 soundtrack is undoubtedly one of the best OSTs I've ever heard, with the only game to ever surpass it being none other than Doom Eternal. Without Mick Gordon, Modern Doom wouldn't be what it is today. His adrenaline pumping tracks have kept us slaying demons for more than seven years now. It's hard to imagine the future of Doom without him. Whatever direction they decide to take the Doom franchise into, none of it would be possible without the foundation laid by 2016. More than two decades after the original launched in 1993, Doom 2016 took the best parts of everything that came before it and combined them into what I firmly believe is the perfect version of the classic Doom formula. It has the intense combat, hidden secrets, unique atmosphere, and amazing soundtrack that you've come to expect from Doom, all done in a nearly flawless way. If it wasn't for 2016, Eternal never would have been able to take that perfected formula and turn it into something incredible. Modern Doom wouldn't be the same without what Doom 2016 accomplished. With how successful the past two games have been, it wouldn't surprise me if they took the Modern Doom formula and applied it to classic Doom. While a Doom remake is entirely possible, I don't think it should happen. Tap on the video that's on screen now to find out why. You should go ahead and watch the video, it's a pretty interesting concept that I honestly think you'll want to hear about. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. That's pretty much all I have for now though, until next time.